Now in this video, we'll talk about uh, external based authentication method using Triplet. Like how we can how we can have some external authentication method. What are the major advantages? And how what are the different protocols which we are going to use to make that possible? Now before we go with some external based authentication method, let's try to understand some of the major drawbacks with local based authentication. Now in case of local based authentication, like here, I got a router one connecting to switch. Let's say I got a switch two as well, and then switch three as well. Now, if you want any specific engineer to access any specific device, then there must be a use local username and the password created on each and every device. But this is something not possible in a big size networks where you have some 20 plus devices and it going to each and every device and creating the username and the password for each and every employee or engineer who, who will be accessing the devices remotely. It's something not possible. So there's no centralized control and the administrative task is going to be increased here. So it's really not scalable for big size networks. Now to overcome this, what we can do is in the authentication wise, what we are going to do is we are not going to store the username and the password on the local machine. Let's say I got a router or a firewall, whatever it is. Let's assume that it's a router. Now we are going to maintain one external based authentication server we call as Triplet server. Now ACS is actually a software which is going to run on that computer. So if any user is going to try to log into any specific device, it can be login via console line or it can be via VTWL line or it can be auxiliary line. Uh, even you can use for PPP also. PPP also we can, we can do that. If any user tries to log into any device or provide a connect, want to access the device, in this scenario we are going to discuss only about login authentications. Now the device is going to send the request back to the external base server. Now this will be referred as a client and this the devices like routers, switches, firewalls will be referred as clients or AAA clients whereas this server is going to, uh, this, this AAA server, it's going to be like a server. Now what we are going to do is we are going to create all the username and the password. All this information or the database is maintained by this server, not individual devices. Now if any user tries to log into this device, it's going to send the authentication method to the server and the server is going to validate your authentication. If it is correct, it's going to tell the device to accept the connection. If it is not correct, in that case, it's going to tell not to accept the connections. Now here we are not going to store the username and the passwords of each and every on each and every device. Instead, it is stored in the external base server. Now this can be done by using some AAA kind of implementations. We'll talk about that more in detail. Now one of the major advantages using the external based authentication method is your username and the passwords are stored on the local server, not on the local machine. Okay, so every time any use device tries to log in, it will be authenticated by the external server and it allows you to have a centralized authentication method where all the username and the passwords can be stored in a one single server on a centralized server and it minimizes the administrative task and it's really scalable for big size networks. Now this is this can be done by using some some kind of configuration called Triple A. We call this as Triple A. Triple A stands for authentication, authorization and accounting. Now it is an acronym for authentication, authorization and accounting. Now authentication is going to provide if any device, any user tries to log in, he's going to provide the authentication like authenticating the user, whether he is a valid user or not. If he is a valid user, then he will be able, he will be provided access based on the username and the password. And once he logs in, then authorization is a method where the particular the server is going to verify whether this particular user is authorized to do this or not. Like it simply says what he can do, what he cannot do. Like. Some of the examples like if, if, a, if authentication, if a user logs in, like we can define some basic example like when the user logs in, he can read, read and read only permissions, but he cannot make any changes, something like that. That's what we call an authorization. What, what are the operations the user can perform? Whether he can change the password, he cannot change the password, we can change the IP address like that. Those are the authentication implementations. Now after that, accounting is something maintained by the device. And again, accounting is something like keeping the track of each and everything what happened. Like if, if a user tries to log into the device via VTY line, 
it will tell you what, from which line he access vty line or console line or at what is the time and how much duration he was he was online on that particular device and what are the changes he did like what are the commands he has issued all that information will be maintained by this servers now it's going to provide three different options it's going to provide you the authentication authenticating the user whether a valid user or an invalid user authorizing the user with what he can do what he cannot do and then keeping the track of all the all the events or all the things whatever he did that's what we call as accounting okay so uh, we can we can do with this this kind of things by using some external based servers and there are two major protocols which are used here radius and tecax which are client server triple protocols so whenever a user device tries to log into any device either telnet or vtv line now this router will be referred as a triple client and the server computers they might be running some application like cisco secure acs express or cisco secure acs for windows server these are the different types of applications what uh, which will allow you to maintain that triple database and the device is going to send a request to the external server and the external server is going to verify the username and the password and it's going to inform to the device that is your client and based on that the user will be allowed to log in now the major advantage we get here is uh, we got a centralized uh, centralized administration or centralized authentication centralized authorization and accounting all this maintained by this external server and there are two major protocols which will help help us to do like tacax and the radius now radius is is a standard protocol whereas tacax is a cisco proprietary one so tacax stands for terminal access control access controller access control system whereas uh, radius stands for remote authentication dialing user service now these two are almost same but tacax is somewhat much secure than radius depending upon the requirement we can use any one of these external based authentication methods now probably in this section we are not getting into uh, how to configure this tacax or this kind of things something beyond the scope of this course but we are going to assume that we have a server which which will be providing some username and the passwords and we are going to verify that in our labs in the next section